Welcome back and I thank you all for your patience while we were getting ready. The second presentation of the day concerns archiving books, artifacts and music, the Music Academy experience. Uh, we have Sri M.K. Jagdish, who is our consulting librarian, who after years of being the librarian at USIS has lent, has shed luster on the Music Academy's library. We have Vidushi Savita Narsiman, who is today very deeply involved in archiving and creating virtual experiences, particular her, particularly her Museum of Performing Arts, which is an entirely virtual experience of a museum. And we have Suresh Vijay Raghavan, the CTO of the Hindu. These three people have been working together very closely in making sure that the Music Academy takes on its archiving activity. And we have been making progress. It has not been a very easy task. It's been very difficult. But we have made some reasonable progress in the last few years. And today, they will be presenting their experience to us. Over to you, 45 minutes from now. Good morning. And namaskarams to President of the Music Academy, Shri Murali, Secretary Shri Sriram, Presiding over the session today, Sangeeta Kalanidhi, Shri Sanjay Subramanian, members of the experts and executive committees, learned artists and members of the audience. On behalf of my co-speakers, Shri Jagadish and Shri Suresh, I thank the Academy for giving us this opportunity to talk about the digitization work that is currently underway in the Academy's archives. The Music Academy has a sizable and valuable collection of material in the form of photographs, books, manuscripts, its own souvenirs and journals, artifacts that have been handed to it, and of course, a huge bulk of audiovisual material relating to its activities since its inception 97 years ago. And over the years, the Academy has taken several steps to uh, organize and preserve this material and make it accessible to the public. Today's session is going to be divided into three segments. The first segment will look at the archiving work done in the library. The second segment will look at the archiving done with the music, dance, and lecture demonstration collections. And the third segment will look at the new advanced software that has been brought in for this purpose. I now request Sri Jagadish to talk about the digitization work done with the library's collections. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I have given a small uh, subtitle to this presentation. Uh, which says research resources and the library. Uh, referring to the uh, conference going on the last 12, 12 days, 13 days, uh, the presentations which have been made have used resources ranging from books, manuscripts, audiovisual material, personal interviews, and archival materials. So this itself becomes a big resource, which is uh, documented in the Journal of the Music Academy the following year. And that itself is a scholarly journal which can be used by scholars. Now we connect the resources to the library to do research and discuss about the Music Academy library. K.R. Sundaram Iyer Memorial Library, the Music Academy at the Music Academy has over 6,000 6, printed and digital digitized books and other materials on music, dance, and further disciplines of arts in several languages. It also has in its possession publications by the Music Academy and other institutions in addition to doctoral theses and reports. The, the important here is some of the major and important acquisitions are papers of Sangeet Kalanidhi Professor Sambamurthy, collections of Sangeet Kalanidhi Ambar S. Sujaragavachar, Sangeet Kalanidhi Vinjamuri Viradarajayangar, and recently, most recently, we received uh, the collections from Sangeet Kalanadi Dwaram Vengarsam Naidu's collections. The resource materials in the library are classified and arranged on the shelves according to subjects for easy retrieval. 
As today's focus is on archiving and digitization, we will focus on the digital library collection at the Music Academy. Uh, I'm going to show a few uh, slides with images where the type of materials which have been digitized in the library, you will have an idea of that. So I'm going to give you samples. This is the, the photograph of the annual conference in 1929. Uh, this is one of the oldest books, 1859, Sangeeta Sarvartha Sara Sangrahamunu by Veena Ramarajaya. See, uh, our website has an article in the blog portion of which gives you a total different idea on the aspects uh, which are covered in this particular publication, which is the, one of the oldest Carnatic books to be printed and published in Madras. Sangeeta Sampradaya Pradarshini, as is it called, SSP, uh, which is 1904, it's a monumental text in the history of modern Carnatic music. And no musician uh, goes without mentioning this particular text. The other one is uh, Sangeeta Kalanidhi by Tachur Singaracharyulu, which was published in 1912 in Telugu. The text deals with interesting principles of music, like Raga Prastara and other aspects. Uh, I think it was uh, told some time ago that the Sangeeta Kalanidhi title was uh, taken from this particular uh, book. So that has a lot of relevance to the award which is given to uh, Sangeeta Kalani is around uh, the uh, period, over periods. The next we have the press clippings, which are uh, from, uh, I'll, I'll go into the uh, detailed, uh, the uh, pre period covered in these press clips, but I want you to see the uh, images where the type of material which we have covered in the whole area. The, uh, the other one which you see here is the opening of the Music Academy uh, the Hindu uh, on Monday, August, the, the opening was done on 18th of August, but the report was August 20, 1928. So materials like this we still we have in our collections, which uh, research scholars can uh, make use of. Um, the other one is uh, Mysore Vasudeva Chari. It's a later clipping, which we thought we'll just include the type of materials which we have. In fact, this material we recently gave to a researcher who was working on Vasudevacharya. Okay, then we move on to the, how did this collection come into existence and how we uh, actually came up with this whole idea of uh, digitization and all that. Uh, in 2016, it's proposed to convert the library into a state-of-the-art resource center to provide a global access. The then existing collection was meticulously reviewed and relevant documents were identified for retention in the library. So the review of, of, by experts and scholars happened and then we identified materials which were to be retained in the library. And of course this is a process of, uh, I would call say in the library terms, reading. As an initial effort, towards library automation, we created a database of bibliographic records called the OPAC, Online Public Access Catalog, using a UNESCO developed uh, free uh, open access uh, software, uh, which uh, contained the uh, documents identified for retention. The OPAC, uh, in short form it's called, uh, includes information about the books and other documents printed and digitized available in the Music Academy library. Uh, the digitized, uh, the, the project actually was, uh, you know, uh, uh, implemented in collaboration with the Roja Muthaya Research Library, and the collaboration continues even today uh, in the uh, whole technical processing of the uh, publications at the uh, Music Academy. Okay, so what does the uh, digital library content? What is the content of the digital library which we have here? <coughs> We have over 300 rare books, which you saw a sample of it in the beginning. The Journal of the Music Academy from 1930, which is not only available at the library, but also on the website, which I will show you in a few minutes. 
the annual conference and the concert souvenir from 1931. And of course, the 31, 31, 32, 33, we recently got it from the Dwaram collection. Uh, so which we, we didn't have earlier. And this is also available on the uh, website, which people can freely download or read whatever they want to for the purposes of research. Then we have a record, I mean, our archive of uh, photographs from the 1955 to 1988, and we have actually captioned these photographs, and then people can identify the, those who are there in the uh, photographs. But we are in continuing with our archiving uh, of the, the, for, uh, the future years. Uh, we have the records, but the process is on to include the photographs into the database. So press clippings I have start, uh, talked about from 1920 to 1992. And this we sample of this again you saw earlier. This, the other speciality is we have so many of other institutions and some special publications in our collection, uh, which are very, very useful for the um, research purpose. Like, for example, the Indian Fine Arts Society. Very recently, we got a lot of uh, souvenirs, and then we have digitized many of them. OK, uh, just the screenshots of the catalog. This is uh, available at the intranet. That is, inside the library, you can access this particular uh, catalog, which is available on the website, uh, which has a different uh, screen, which, you, which I will show you a little, little later. The, the searching can be done by title, author, keywords, subject-wise, year of publication, publisher, all these. In fact, we have made a search on Tyagaraja, which just shows you about uh, 100 and odd uh, references. And we can go into the details of uh, where it is located where, by the, you know, the shelf mark, which is there in that uh, first, category, first line. Next. Uh, we have uh, made a lot of efforts uh, to put in uh, the catalog, uh, the other uh, public, uh, other uh, uh, aspects of the library into the website, and recently the catalog was revamped for uh, user-friendly uh, purpose. When you go to the website of the Music Academy, and on the uh, top bar, if you say library, you will get into this particular page, where we have the library catalog, journal index, view of the journal then view of the Sony's, and then an ask librarian uh, for feedback. We, we have made a provision for people to uh, let us know what they want or even what they feel of the collection. So this is uh, uh, the, on the website. If you go to the catalog, you will find the screen. Again, the Tagaraja, uh, we have uh, made it as a sort of you know, uh, standard one. And this is the uh, screen which you will look for. And you will, you will see here that we have indicated that this particular work is digitized. So you will know that this is available in the digital library. And also, we don't make these printed versions available to the uh, public because of the you know, uh, wear out of the materials. So this is the journal index, uh, which have been the articles in the journals uh, are indexed by, by the title and the author. So you can actually. Uh, search the uh, journal index and go to the particular uh, article in a journal, uh, whichever it, year it is, so it will give you a reference and then you can uh, make use of that particular article. So again, the results show here that the you know, uh, particular uh, 1987, 145 to uh, 153 pages. So this is how the journal index can be in, uh, searched, and then we will go into the journal uh, straight away. The complete journal collection is from 1930. It is, uh, in fact, we found in 1929 recently, which has to be included in the website. Uh, so you can read this, or you can even download free. So this is where we call the open access and the free downloading can be done by research scholars uh, who are working on specific areas. So next, the Sony's. Again, the same situation with the uh, Sony's. And again, we have to do, load the, uh, the previous ones yet. We, uh, it starts from 35 here, but we are going to load it uh, further. So the Sony is, again, you can read, then download in whatever uh, form you want to uh, for the research purposes. So this is what we call as the uh, uh, free open access where people, research scholars can make use of the resources of the Music Academy. 
This is a very interesting one because many people don't respond uh, for whatever has the library done for them for research or whatever purpose. So we have provided a, a, a provision for ask the librarian. For example, you have a comment or you want to suggest a material to the library, we'll be glad to, uh, based on your research and the credentials, we should be able to procure those materials to the library. Well, uh, as we you know, receive books to the library by donations, uh, we have received over the years uh, a lot of artifacts uh, as donated uh, items. What you can see here is uh, the, the tambura, which is used by Maha Vaidyanathan Iyer. Uh, it was uh, given to us in 1998, and uh, it is preserved uh, in the library for the moment. And this is the 100-year-old uh, veena uh, given by the uh, family of Dr. M.S. Lakshmi Kumari uh, very recently. We got this very recently, and uh, we are still, uh, you know. Uh, the, the other one is a goat vadyam. See, the goat vadyam uh, of Shankar uh, Narayan Iyer, the primary disciple of Sangeet Kalanidhi, Dr. Herkesh L. Muthaya Bhagavatar, it was restored. You know, it came in a, a little uh, different situation, uh, not really working condition. So we, uh, it was restored and the, uh, with the guidance of an expert who made it this ready for playing. So it can be, we can play this goat vadyam at any given time. So these, uh, we are uh, actually, uh, in the process of uh, preserving these artifacts uh, so that you know, it can be you know, uh, showcased in, in the future. So that process is going on at the moment. Uh, there are several others which we received. I uh, see a new tambura by late Sangeeta Kalanidhi Samangudi or Srinivas Iyer's family, especially for the benefit of teachers and students of the academics, uh, Academy's Advanced School of Carnatic Music. Then we have uh, some uh, tamburas and veenas uh, which were received. Uh, one thing I want to mention here is uh, the artifact received from the Dwaram uh, family. Uh, we received a shawl along with uh, other personal collections which we are keeping uh, in the library for future processing. So the, the, the resources at the library are vast and how we make use, and we are actually on the process of uh, making it available to the library uh, patrons at whatever uh, you know, um, situation you are, you're looking for some materials in a particular area, we'll be able to help you. The, coming to the only ongoing projects, I would say, we would like to continue the digitization of existing manuscripts and other special collections. See, what we are trying to, uh, as we open up boxes inside, uh, we are getting new materials for processing. Uh, uh, one such uh, episode I would like to uh, share with you is uh, that uh, when we uh, were, the spring cleaning was going on in the academy, and uh, in one of the lofts, they found some printed materials which were laminated. And, uh, so they thought it probably belongs to the library. Then uh, Mr. Sriram was informed about that. And as you know, Mr. Sriram, the encyclopedia, identified as the uh, Oriental Music by A.M. Uh, Chinasamy Madhuliyar. So this was laminated and the prints were very clear. Uh, prints were very clear and then uh, we thought we will uh, digitize this, uh, this one particular thing. So then uh, Mr. Sriram also informed a scholar. This is a collaboration which we do uh, from the Music Academy with the scholars. So which is actually the resulting in a very great result. So uh, one uh, Vidushi Shank uh, Aishwarya Shankar, yeah. she's here right there. Uh, she was working on this particular project. And then we told her that uh, this is available at the Music Academy library. Uh, so she immediately ran to the uh, library and then said, let me take a look at it. So, but the interesting point here is that she had searched this for this publication in several libraries all over the world, I would say, in fact, but she couldn't find what she wanted. That was the situation where this particular collection had 
a letter of correspondence in Tamil between Subrahma Dikshitar and uh, Chinnaswami Mudaliyar. So this was actually identified by her, and then she said, this actually made my project. So such is the resource of the uh, Music Academy, and uh, so we are very glad and very happy to say that the resources have to be used uh, to a great extent, so and we are all here to help you out. Then we also, on the ongoing projects, I would say, identify resources for procuring. You know, we see, we get, uh, uh, we identify and a lot of people come forward to donate uh, the items which they have, which we try to see if it can be digitized and put it into our digital library. And then, <laughs> two minutes, sir. <laughs> I know you will say that. <laughs> Okay, they then continue promotion of resources. For example, you know, in the first day of the presentation, we promoted the MBARS collections. Uh, so one of the collections which we want to promote, several similar collections we want to promote and say what the Music Academy Library has, so that it becomes, people become aware of the resources which are there. Next is the explore possibilities of providing public access to the, uh, of, the, uh, of the digital library. So which, this is a long, uh, long I mean, ongoing project which we will think how we can do that. My favorite statement is that internet is not a substitute slash replacement for library. <laughs> Absolutely, you know, uh, if you go to even a school project, they say go to Google and get the, uh, you know, materials from the, uh, for your project, which is absolutely, you know, uh, I don't like it. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, in fact, with the artificial in intelligence coming into the picture, I don't know what's going to happen to music. So that probably would be a separate seminar we can have, artificial intelligence and uh, the future of music. With this, I would like to thank the authorities, uh, Mr. President uh, Mr. Murli and uh, Sri Ram especially, who is the brainchild behind this. And uh, we would like to invite you to explore the collection at the Music Academy uh, Library. And uh, which is open uh, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. And of course, the contact information is given elsewhere. Uh, at this point, I would like to mention one person who is uh, very important in the library, Satyavati, around here. <laughs> uh, you won't believe that uh, people who have met her will know what her potential is. Uh, she can even identify any book in the library and then pick it up and give it to you. And she knows, if, if, I, if you ask her if the, whether this book is available in the library, yes sir, yes sir, aparamma <laughs> patakla. So, <laughs> so this is the uh, potential. So we are, we are very blessed with uh, the, because she has a long experience. Uh, of more than 15 years at the uh, library, and then I'm only new here, actually, basically. <laughs> so I have purposely avoided the photograph of the library, but because I would like you all to come and visit the library. Uh, this makes it more personal. Otherwise, you will never do it. Because, oh, this is the library. OK, fine, yeah. But the question is, uh, we want you to come over and see the library and see the resources, experience the uh, ambience there. And, and then uh, look into the resources, which are very useful for the research scholars. Thank you once again. Thanks for the time. I will be talking about the archiving work that has been done with the music, dance, and lecture demonstration collections in the Academy. As many of you might know, the Academy has, as its collections, its own recordings, as well as recordings that have been donated to it by well-wishers over the years. One such person is Sri R.T. Chari, uh, who himself has served as the Vice President of the Academy and is a well-known connoisseur of arts and heritage. He donated a sizable chunk of his own private collection to the Academy, 
and helped set up what has since been called the TAG Digital Archive. Now, this was launched in 2008 with facilities which were very state of art then, like touchscreen monitors and high-end uh, headphones through which uh, listeners could come into the archives and search for and listen to any musician or concert of their choice <coughs> at the touch of a screen. Excuse me. Since then, this collection has uh, grown steadily, and of course, we have Sri Chari's munificence and his farsightedness to thank for this facility. In 2013, the Academy uh, introduced viewing facilities for its dance and lecture demonstration collections, and these have also grown steadily over the years. But as with all things technological, and as is the case with archives and libraries across the world, what we call state of art is a shifting concept. Every few years, there is a dramatic breakthrough, and uh, we find ourselves looking at new and improved technological tools. And so there is a constant need to upgrade and enhance existing facilities in order to keep up with the times. And this is the reason that the Academy decided to upgrade its existing archival facilities last year. This project began uh, roughly around March 2022, and I have divided this period between then to now into four phases to explain the work that we have done. As Sri Ram mentioned, this is an ongoing project and by no means completed. In phase one, we created a policy for the archives a very thorough policy that now determines what is the kind of material that the Academy will accept into its collection or not accept, as may be the case. Uh, for example, we often get calls from people asking if the Academy will take over their collections of old spools or LPs or tapes. But on closer scrutiny, we find that some of these collections are very random. They are sometimes damaged uh, from moisture and fungus or sometimes there's no index, there's no way of knowing what the contents are, who recorded them, where, when, with whose permission, and so on. So in such situations, the Academy will not be able to accept these collections simply because it is also a waste of the time and resources of the Academy to look into such random material. So collections are now very carefully scrutinized, and if found to be valuable and in good condition, they are accepted, Donors are also now given multiple options on what can be done with the collections. There are detailed guidelines on accession, deaccession, and so on. So after we created the policy, we first looked at, deeply analyzed the existing audiovisual systems, the server system, the migration processes, files and folders, all of this is very technical. I will not go into the details. We also then identified the existing issues and problems in this system. Uh, and I will be explaining that in brief very shortly. And then we prepared a list of um, changes and upgrades that could be brought in. In phase two, we were introduced to this wonderful new software called Entermedia DB with all its scope and possibilities. And here again, Mr. Suresh will be talking about it in detail in his segment. As we often joke to each other, if I start talking about software and he starts talking about music, then we are in for a disaster. So for this new software, we created a new system. And this new system was created based on two broad aspects. One was how to systematically organize all of these tracks, all of the recordings that we have, using very, very thorough metadata fields. And the second aspect was how to create an error-free system of entering all the data into the new system. We also tested a few tracks to see all the possibilities as well as roadblocks. And why I say this is because Entermedia DB, although it's an extremely advanced software, has never been used till date to handle any material related to music or dance. So it almost had to be molded, repurposed, reconstructed to suit the requirements of this particular project. In phase three, we created a pronunciation guide, a very detailed reference chart in order to standardize spellings, in order to standardize the way in which names were entered, names of songs, ragams, thalams, people, everything. For example, 
in the old system if one wanted to listen to recordings of shri ji and balasubramaniam you would have to search under three four spellings n i a n n i a m n i n y a n n y a m so different recordings had been you know uh, fed in under the different spellings adhe madri bhairavi kriti chintayama kanda moolam chintayama chintayamam chintayamam kanda chintayama kanda moolam there were all these entries for the same song so now what we have done is we have standardized all this there's only single entries for every value in the new software then a detailed user manual was prepared that can help navigate users in this new software and this has also been constantly refined continues to be refined i also had several discussions with archiving experts on how to classify the data naming conventions and these were experts that were representatives of organizations like the ICA the International Council of Archives and the ARCE Archives and Research Center for Ethnomusicology in Delhi and all of this was aimed at organizing this data all this material in very simple and user friendly manner then we took up in the next phase we took up music first as this had uh, the bulk of the data we now have more than 60000 tracks of music alone in the academy's archives and as i said we started with cleaning the track information spelling checks correction of other errors and so on then we identified tracks that had uh, incorrect or incomplete or missing information for example sometimes a track would play a certain song but the information entered would be wrong the name of the song may may be wrong or the ragam or the thalam sometimes the composers were not listed we have segregated these tracks and we are working on filling up all this information and in this process we have been helped greatly by several experts senior musicians and music musicologists and i would like to take this opportunity to express our gratitude for all their help we've had shrimati rs jayalakshmi we've had shrimati rita rajan uh, they are all reservoirs of information shrimati rita rajan has an elephantine memory and a vast database in her brain every time we called her with a doubt she would get back to us within half an hour or within that day and she would have solved that doubt for us we had shrimati pallavi uh, for marathi abhangs we've had shrimati kanakam devakuptapu also who is here with us today for telugu compositions particularly annamacharya again very knowledgeable herself and she also referred to many of her friends and telugu scholars back in andhra and she shed many tears of blood at the massacre of the telugu words that had been entered <laughs> under anamacharya then we've also had shri shriram parshuram for helping us with the hindustani tracks we heard his wonderful presentation here a few days ago he was kind enough to come into the archives and the icing on the cake was that we were all treated to um, occasional outbursts of alap or bandish or khayal he would just launch into all of those as he was looking at the recordings we also had shri arun prakash for identifying complex pallavis and thalams especially in instrumental tracks and shrimati aarati rao for kannada compositions as i mentioned the existing tag archives while they had been of great service to scores of listeners over the years also had some issues especially when seen from the current technological standpoint this shows you those it had a very slow interface there was no standardization as i said there were all kinds of errors corrections could not be done directly in the system there was a very complicated and roundabout way of doing corrections there were very limited search options and so on the way the data had been stored and handled the music data had been handled entirely on excel spreadsheets which meant less standardization more prone to errors and not the best solution for interlinked data then the lecture demonstrations were not identifiable by theme there was no metadata or no standardized fields for dance so these were some of the issues now all of this might sound very tedious and dry and boring but we actually encountered many funny uh, situations especially with regard to some mistakes and misspelt entries and i'm going to give you a few examples here there was a thalam named as char panch ke sava din and shri shri ram parshuram clarified that this was actually char panch ki sawari and of course gave a beautiful explanation on what it is there was a track named maharaja garam which is actually maharaju garamane 
my favorite is possibly this dudu bhi yore mere govind lala which is actually dud piore mere govind lala chera ravade mera was listed as tyagaraja agra and gwalior were listed as composers and so on so these are the things that we've been cleaning up uh i'll quickly go through the solutions that we've implemented i have already mentioned some 2500 rtps were named initially all of these tracks were just called rtps now we have entered the words of the pallavis for all of the tracks there were several tracks of varnams krithis all the virtham shlokams tilanas mangalams that didn't have the opening words these have been entered ragas for ragamalika tracks ha- tracks have been identified both in compositions and improvisations then we have also devised a detailed system of identifying the type of composition or improvisation for example earlier everything was just generally indicated as virtham now it is either virtham or shlokam or uga bhoga or so on languages for compositions had not been indicated now they are i mentioned the importance of metadata fields now we have given substantial attention to organize all the tracks all the recordings and information according to metadata fields this screen shows you this shows you the entire list for music you have the obvious ones like composition name ragam talam composer venue occasion date and so on we also have something called the comp- comp- compositional genre which is it indicates whether the composition is avarnam kriti kirtanam bhajan tillana padam etc then we have the improvisational genre which indicates whether the track has alapana atani avartanam a shlokam or a virtham then we also now have information on the supporting vocal supporting instrumental uh, artists co-artists and what is interesting also is that we have something called the tags which is extra information detailed information on certain compositions for example ati janma midha is now tagged as prahlad bhakti vijayam so listeners can now either search for ati janma or search for prahlad bhakti vijayam itself which will bring up all the compositions of that body of work in the academy's collection uh, tumani madatha for example is tagged as tirupavai and divya prabandham indicating the smaller and larger bodies of work avarna krithis and so on we have something called the artistic discipline which segregates performances into music dance educational which is like dems and panel discussions and devotional upanyasam uh, harikathas and so on we have the performance genre which is carnatic hindustani western and so on and yes we do have some western tracks also i'll quickly summarize the work done so far just one minute uh we have now successfully migrated 62000 tracks into the new software and as for the ongoing work and plans for the coming months we also plan to do the same with the dance and the lecture demonstration collections we are also looking into making the possibilities of making the archives digitally accessible after looking into legalities copyrights ipr and so on and finally we hope to create an encyclopedic database with detailed track information hyperlinks to other articles or material uh, in the academy and elsewhere and mr suresh will be showing you slides of how that is being planned a project of such magnitude cannot be worked on by a single person and it has been teamwork at its best and for to start with i uh, thank the music academy and particularly shri shriram for bringing me into this project Uh, it has been a very big creative challenge and i've learned many things along the way i had with me harini rangan uh, who was involved every step of the way and got so involved that uh, she was dreaming about excel spreadsheets and reading and sending text messages in diacritics so i miss her very much on this project but i'm very happy that lakshman who's also helping us today with the presentation <laughs> has stepped into her shoes he has a very keen researcher's mm-hmm. mind and is a great asset now for the backbone of this whole archive team in the academy we have mohana priya anand and anbaragan i'd like them to come forward please they have been with the archive since the beginning and it has been a challenge for them because they have had to unlearn the previous system and relearn this new one but they have not let that affect their diligence or their output
I would also like to thank several members of the Academy's office and, of course, Satya, who is central to everything in the Academy. They helped retrieve material, they gave space for meetings and endless cups of tea and coffee. And finally, the hero of the project, the, the pillar of this project, Mr. Suresh, he not, only, he not only brought in the new software, he had endless discussions with me and Harini on how to organize the data. He has coordinated with the intermediate team on how to module this software for our requirements. And very soon, will be bursting into Kalyani and Todi himself. <laughs> to conclude, I would like to say that creating a well-organized and world-class archive offers many advantages, the most important being preservation of cultural heritage, which would otherwise be lost, and which is the central mission of any good archive. For example, there are still many rare recordings in the archives today in the academy that are not available on YouTube. And to give you two examples or three examples, we have Shemangudi Srinivas Iyer's Natajana Paripala and Nike Daya. We have Alatur Srinivas Iyer's special concert, Dikshatar concert recorded in 1975. We have Aryakudi Raman Jayangar's Tiruvayar concert with Sri Lalgudi Jaraman and Sri TK Murthy. These are all rare recordings still in the archives also allows for access and retrieval, which is something the Academy has always looked into. And here again, example is Sri uh, Keshav Desi Raju, late Keshav Desi Raju, who in his book, Off Gifted Voice on MS Subalakshmi, was able to trace the changes in MS's repertoire just by a study and analysis of all the recordings available in the archives, and who also highlighted some landmark concerts of MS during those years. So it acts as a one-stop resource for research, education, collaborations. It gives scholars and researchers and other organizations the opportunity to create new work using this as a reference material. So this endeavor makes the Music Academy the only one of its kind facility in the South that organizes and offers such facilities to the public. Thank you. I now request Mr. Suresh to talk about the new software, IntermediaDB. Good morning to all of you, and uh, thanks to M Music Academy for giving me this opportunity. Thanks to Murli sir for bringing me into this project. I feel very privileged. I am the odd man in the whole team. I don't know anything about music when I started. Even now, I only know a few words. I will share my learning experience towards the end if uh, time is there. <laughs> So when, when uh, I came in to analyze the current system and the requirements of a digital asset management uh, tool here, so we felt there are three areas that we need to have focus. One is the ability to search, but search based on the taxonomy for the domain. That means you should be able to search based on keywords which is related to the music domain. And second thing is, which was not done in the earlier system, is how do we identify relationships when people search? If I search for a specific raga and from there can I branch and system can show other things that is there inside the system which is related to that. So that will enlarge the scope of the search itself. And the third thing is, can we expand this in, into an encyclopedia so that we can put related information into the system so it becomes a single uh, uh, system where people can actually conduct research. So with that, we started looking at tools and we did several POCs with few software and then we finalized this intermedia DB. And uh, had a couple of POCs and the current version is now uh, with 62,000 tracks, it's uh, ready and they're actually doing full testing. So I will show the various search capabilities and the relationship that's, that's there within the system, how you can actually use it. So if you can see, here the search is actually using a various taxonomy fields. Here I'm taking the composition name Palin Chukamakshi. And it actually brings out all the tracks, there are 105 tracks in the system on this particular uh, composition of the 62,000 tracks that we have. So the system brings this out, and you are able to actually play this and listen to the tracks individually once you have the search. So now we are looking for at an artist level. So search for uh, MS Subalakshmi, madam, and it brings in all the composition that she has rendered, which is available with this within the archive itself. Again, you can listen to those things after the search is done. So now we are going for an advanced search where we are taking combination, Palinche Kamakshi by MS Subalakshmi. So its system is able to bring all those tracks based on these two keywords, and you're able to see this and play that. Now we're going a step further. So we're taking two combinations, Emma Subalakshmi and Emma Vasantha Kumari, and the composer being Shama Shastri. 
and madhyam avadi is the ragam so the moment these keywords are fed in the system is able to identify that we have currently eight tracks with this combination inside and all this search comes to you in a fraction of second number 1 um, number 2 when you type those words like subb it it will bring in all the list of name that is there related to that keyword that you are entering so that you will not go and enter a wrong keyword so the system guides you what actually you should uh, get in and these are all the ma metadata that that has been fed into the system as part of the taxonomy definition itself <clears throat> so now the, the most important aspect where this system is better than other archival system is how we are able to get the interrelationships. Say we do a search, in this case we are searched for Palinchi Kamachi, Artis Vasanath Kumari, and it has given a list of uh, tracks that has been rendered by, this, by, the, by the artist. But now we can click on any of these fields and then go into relationships. <coughs> Next. So now actually after clicking on the Palinchi Kamachi, it is now taking me to this master data for that specific composition. We have put some basic information here related to, related to this composition, but now you have the capability to define a taxonomy for this composition itself separately. So, if, so we can feed those information also inside. So somebody wants to understand more about that composition, that information can be put in, and we can link it to all the other sources also. So from here, by just taking one composition, you are able to actually branch out and get more information. There is actually no limit. It's your uh, imagination is only the limit if you, the way you want to extend this system now. Now on that composition, we are able to see all the rendition that is there inside this archive today. See, we, we have chosen a composition and from there we are coming and seeing on this composition what, what tracks are there. And you can see the different artists who have rendered this over a period of time various, on various concerts. You can click on this concert, you can go into that concert and see what other uh, uh, songs have been played on that specific concert. Or you can click on the specific artist, it will tell all the other renditions given by this artist. That way, the interlinking is automatically built inside the system. Similarly, like how we saw a composition once the Raham was chosen, you can actually build a separate metadata structure for the Raham itself. So you can actually provide all the information that you want for the specific Raga into the system. Again, link this to all external systems the way we want. On this Raga, what all the other renditions that we actually have inside this? See, this whatever is there in the archive is the universe for this particular system. The more tracks that we put inside, the relationship that it can build and showcase back to us will also improve automatically. Similarly, if, if, if you click on a specific person, we, we chose uh, Shama Shastri here, you can build a complete encyclopedia for that specific uh, person. And if he's a composer, all the collections of this composition can be seen. If he's all, some, I've seen somebody also compose, somebody also sings. So that, that also will come here. If they're also rendered like, uh, uh, like Murdang or Violin, that will also come in. So all, it builds all these relationships automatically within the system. So in this case, we have taken the collection of compositions from Shama Shastri. It, it lists all those compositions that has been rendered with various artists here. And another example is we have taken Emil Vasanta Kumari to showcase uh, the data about that specific uh, person. And songs run, rendered by that person as the primary artist on various occasions. And we have taken a specific track here and then all the metadata that has been shown in the previous uh, presentation by Savita, all these details are actually here. This is a track from year 1970 <coughs> by Shama by Satri, and this I th I is rendered by Sir, uh, who is uh, uh, sitting here. Not this one? Oh, sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think the next, next one. Yeah. This is from 1970, the December concert here. <laughs> And we are taking a specific concert, MLV 69, and it shows the details of this concert and uh, all the co-artists who has actually played the various instruments as part of this concert and the various renditions that is there in this concert. And we have, this is, so far the search are all structured search. That means you are going and telling, I want to search on a specific raga, specific artist. But now I don't want to go for a structured search, I want to do a random search. So this advanced search option that you can do, we are, we are taking Papanasam 7 and Madhyamavadi and Adi. The system is going inside and bringing all this. You can do an and, you can do an or, all combinations you can do. System will go and bring out. See, now in this case, we are showing only the music as a metadata. See, we have music, we have composers, we have raga, we have tala. Based on what search criteria were entered here, it can bring all those various sections and show you that these are all the information that they have against various sections. You can go and choose and start looking into the various aspects of that. 
So in this case, we have taken one uh, specific uh, uh, track that has been rendered. Uh, this track is rendered by uh, who is sitting here. This is year 2011, again, the December uh, program here. <coughs> so this, this has been a very great experience for me personally, being a technology person uh, with very little or no knowledge about music when I started here. So when, when uh, I used to normally work, sir, I have two minutes? From 9.30 in the night to 11.30 when I, when I was working on this program because I reach home by 8 evening and uh, have my uh, dinner and refresh and I said because the guys in the US also will be active that time so I can chat with them to find if I want to do something. We had a 500 tracks that was given to me with the metadata initially when we did the POC. So one of the important aspects of our approach was that metadata is there, the tracks are all MP3 files. So we have to upload the MP3 file and match it with the metadata. The only way I can see is once the metadata is matched, I have to play the track. So if Korea Undrum Millay updating the composition and then the track Aramik Mud, Korea Undrum Millay in Varano. So I took the first track, played. Urnumisha Ache, Rendumisha Ache, Moonumisha Ache, Ah, Uno and the first word were available. Unur track at the moon. Adani Ade Madri. Moonumisha Ache and the words were like. Appa Harini was the one who was coordinating, and she used to also work late. So, WhatsApp up, I said, I don't know if I'm going to talk Then she no, no, sir, that's the No, I know the word, Allah. That's the word, Allah. in the part, Aramikum. So, I'll slide the slider and go to the slider. I'll go to the part, and I'll go to the part. So, back left and I'll go to I have to come to this place where, ah, correct. Number metadata am in the track, and I'm match. Then, the algorithm is working correctly. That's how I started testing. And one day, all the people are talking about the data. All the composition is very good. It's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. It's not That is how I learned on this project. And along with me, the guys in the US also learned because they don't know anything about this. When all this relationship that we built, this was not there as the basic structure in their software. So actually, they have implemented this capability inside when I told them that these are the ways we should relate so that the search capability of the system can be improved and it, it's, it's useful for somebody who's, who can do a research based on this. And they have come up with a newer version. That the version was 10 now, which version 11 with all these capabilities. Now this can be used by anybody else also because they actually open source this, uh, this software. It's available for uh, others to use also. So again, I thank everybody for giving me this opportunity. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, this, is, this presentation has been a very different one compared to what we normally have here on stage. So I think even the summing up, we will go in a different order because among the experts committee of the Music Academy, if at all there is one person who can speak about digitization, a pioneer in it from the year 1999. So I'll first ask Sanjay to begin and then others can follow. Thank you, Sridham. This digitization and archiving has been a favorite pastime of mine. I still continue to do it. Even last year, we developed a database using Power BI for me to input my own concert lists and come up with ways to decide what to sing in my next concert based on what I have sung. So for yesterday's Music Academy concert, I had song lists for the last 23 years. And then I went through it and decided these are the songs I have not sung. Because before that, I didn't have the information. <laughs> Once I get it, I'll put it. So then I decided what to sing so that I have not repeated any song from the last 20 years. So in the Madhuri, I've been interested in this process. And it's fascinating to hear the experts speak on this. Because the work that they have done, I know what pain it involves and how difficult it is to come to this stage. And this is a phenomenal system that they have established in terms of the comprehensive a nature of how they have organized the information and how easily retrievable it is. Like, uh, I think the Music Academy library is one of the finest libraries for Indian music, Indian classical music, especially Carnatic music. There is no other single resource in this world that has so much of information related to this musical system, especially Carnatic music. And it's an almost a one-stop shop for whatever you want that you can get. Yeah, I have spent many hours here I have bothered Satya for many, many days asking for this book and that book, and she has given it to me. So it's a it's a beautiful, uh, and I'm very, very glad and happy that Sri Ram has taken the lead to, you know, initiate all these uh, revolutionary changes that have come in to put these systems in place. I just have a couple of pick bones to pick, not really, but just some issues that I 
just came to my mind as I was listening to their presentations. See, in terms of this promotion of material, which Mr. Jagadish mentioned, which is very important because that is when people know what is available here. Unless you tell it to the people, dissemination is very important. Otherwise, it will become static. If you want the institution to be dynamic, it has to disseminate the information. I think during the conference, there should be a permanent exhibition in the academy. That, that is inviting people to come and see what is there. You just have to have a corner where there is... See, for instance, before the days of digitization, the academy always had a stall where its publications were kept for sale. It's still there. Okay. So that was our first stop to know that these books were published by the academy. In the material, you can take and showcase. For instance, just to see what was there in the 1930 journal or to highlight what was published, like for instance, Yesrajam won the gold medal music competition in the first year, and there is a photograph of Yesrajam in that journal, or souvenir. So that thing is a highlighted, uh, so for instance, if TRS is this year is the centenary or something, then I'm sure there is some reference to TRS in some material from the 40s or 30s that can be showcased this year during that from the library. So it also gives a pointer to what is there in the library and how people can use it. That is, uh, I thought that, that should be done on a yearly basis. as a And this is apart from the season, I think the website itself today is such a dynamic tool for disseminating information. All you need is a mailing list, a free mailing list. And every month you can showcase something from the digital archives and mail it to that list. See, within a matter of months, you will have 10,000 people on that mailing list. So which means you have people who know what is there and you can also use your research scholars, students. So it is multi-dimensional. For instance, people want to view, they will come. People who are here like students or research scholars will immediately find a way of identifying something that is good. Like if there are 10 research scholars and you tell them, sir, in the mass, you can't get this is a project. If you tell them, you can get two journals. You can get one artist, you can get one artist, you can get one ragam, you can get one ragam, you can get one so the point is, one photograph is interesting. So, so many information that can be highlighted for that month. And this is all digital. You can do it from home. You don't need to go anywhere. So, so that way it is also dynamic. And the library has a website where, you know, you have a weekly newsletter, monthly newsletter, something which showcases this. And you put a place where it is permanent and people can view it or all that. So, this is just my suggestion for some kind of dissemination. Regarding Savita's uh, this metadata, I have a very, very strong bone to pick. See, for every composition, the composer is only when he is a Vagayakara. When he is not a Vagayakara, that information is absent. For instance, today he talked about TRS and his tunes. There is no mention of TRS in any tune. It will never be mentioned. We never acknowledge the person who did the tune. But... That data is available even, even in published sources. Like if you take Sadasiva Brahmendral compositions, these have been tuned by Samagudi Srinivas. In the book, there is a preface. In the new system, we have a, a category called notes for every the Notes is trivializing it. No, no, it's not You're, trivializing it. Of course, a composer in a potita. See, so Sadasiva Brahmendral is a lyricist. He's not a composer. A tune smith will show up as a tune smith. That's what I'm trying he's, to say. You know, first of all, you cannot show up as a Sadasiva Brahmendral as a composer. He's not a composer. It's not. We have tagged so all that this. So that tagging is wrong. First itself, the definition itself, he's only a lyricist. How sure. can you call him a composer? On par with Shama Sastri and Tyagaraja. It's an interesting point. This is something my, so which means, no, no, we'll no, look into this. I'll definitely. tell you one thing that uh, in old, uh, there was a presentation some 15 years back by Premila Gurumurthy on Sangam literature. I think one particular paripad alo. Adala vandu, rendu per per orko. El, Isai, Pan. Adh rendu per orda names will be mentioned side by side on equal footing. So that credit we have not given at all all these years. We are working now on trying I'm to do that. I am happy if you can do this it. This is a great <laughs> suggestion my, and we we'll yeah, definitely, yes. I think yes. that should be done first. Because now, you know Suresh Sir, you know that you have to go to the Pibare Ramarasa. You know that you have to go to the Pibare Ramarasa. You know that you have to go to the Pibare Ramarasa. You know that you have to go to the Pibare Ramarasa. So, that is, that is why I said that, that that concept has to be at some point recognized, acknowledged. In we today's are working age, on it yeah, already. Uh, thank yes. you. So, in today's age and uh, information, see, the point is that information will not be 100%, like in most cases. 
but where it's verifiable like for instance see the first stage is publications see published ipo vandu lalitha angi oda source oh illa vandu samangudi portnet see tirupave ariya kudi tune manner abdingirathu ulaga prasiddhi ana indha software la adu theriyadhu enna aandal tune manna nenchindru pa so now that's why it, in any tirupave we have other than the fact that aandal wrote those lyrics we also have who has tuned it you you need to know that but like you said it's a vast amount of information engala mudimo we are including that that's why we are also working with all the experts to make sure we have all that sure. so that's that's but my but yes it's a very important thing that needs to be done the first stage vandu at that level we we have to acknowledge that and do it second is of course at a detailed level chittaswarams also can be documented adu vandu composer level ku vena notes level la kuda vechikala and it's interesting that she said case of desiraju identified landmark concerts about ms subalakshmi abdin in the notes la actually speaking you can have a suggestion box and say whenever somebody listens to a piece of music if they have a piece of trivia just write it and give it so that any story super bad idea any yes. story can be verified edho na and kacheri ketta abdin oda edito and nerathla yaro oru theriyo indar vella ponar avar thittinar abdin edho or information irukum illa or player plane pona satham ketta onnu illa idu vandu airport ku nadathukach see some kind of trivial in lot of people remember stories like for instance when mohan talked about that சங்கராபுரம் பல்லவி டுடே சரிகம பதினி சாப்பாடும் மை அங்கிள் இஸ் சிட்டிங் தேர் ஹீ ஆக்சுவலி கேம் ஹோம் ஆஃப்டர் தட் கான்சர்ட் இட் சாஸ்திரி ஹால் அண்ட் சாங் தட் பல்லவி அண்ட் ஷோட் மீ ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் அ பீஸ் ஆஃப் இன்ஃபர்மேஷன் தட் கேன் பி டேக்ட் ஆஸ் நோட்ஸ் ஆர் வாட் எவர் யூனோ ஸோ தட் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் இன்ஃபர்மேஷன் பிகாஸ் சி சம்டைம்ஸ் அவர் ஹிஸ்ட்ரி ஹேஸ் டு பி பில்ட் ஆன் திஸ் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் ஸ்டோரிஸ் திஸ் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் ட்ரிவியா திஸ் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் இன்ஃபர்மேஷன் that's how we build the overall see wagner vanda avan veetla ukkandundru gache valkyrie patti eidina abdinu kadhaye vechinda avangalu history edirka nammalo adhe kadhaye edalame thappu illaye irukra sources use panna vendidha and there is a wealth of anecdotal information actually which also makes these great artists and composers very real and yes excellent suggestion we'll in fact work. for instance idhula vande namba annamalai university publication la vande thiruvaavaram third volume muthandavar compositions vande திருப்பாமரா சாமிநாத பிள்ள முப்பத்தி ஆறு பாட்டும் முப்பத்தி ரெண்டு பாட்டுக்கு ட்யூன் பண்ணியிருக்காரு ஆனத்தூர் வெங்கடேஷ் சார் ஆறு பாட்டுக்கு ட்யூன் பண்ணியிருந்தார் அதையும் இதையும் சேர்த்து பப்ளிஷ் பண்ணோம்னு கமிட்டியில் மீட்டிங்கில் நடந்தது ராகிருத்தம் பிள்ளை ஒன்று இதை பண்ணுங்கோ இல்லை அவர் சாமிநாத பிள்ளை சொல்லிட்டார் ஒன்று நான் பண்ணதை பண்ணுங்கோ இல்லை அதை மட்டும் பண்ணிட்டு போங்க நான் கிளம்பி போகிறேன்ட்டார் தே டுக் அ டெசிஷன் டு பப்ளிஷ் ஒன்லி த சாங்ஸ் தட் சாமிநாத பிள்ளை கம்போஸ்ட் பட் வாட் வாலத்தூர் வெங்கடேஷர் கம்போஸ்ட் பிரதர்ஸ் ஜி என் பிலாம் பாடின்னு இருந்தா கச்சேரியில் ஸோ அதனால தான் சேவிக்க வேண்டும் ஐயா வந்து உங்களுக்கு ஆபோகிலையும் கேட்கும் ஆந்தோலிக்காலையும் கேட்கும் இப்போ சுவாமிநாத பிள்ளைகிட்ட கற்றுந்தவாலாம் ஆபோகியில் தான் பாடுவா ஆலத்தூர் பிரதர்ஸ் ஜிஎன்பி வழியில் வந்து வாழலாம் வந்து ஆந்தோலிக்கா சி திஸ் இஸ் பட் திஸ் இஸ் டாக்குமெண்டட் இன் த ப்ரிஃபேஸ் ஆஃப் தேர்ட் வால்யூம் ஆஃப் அண்ணாமலை யூனிவர்சிட்டி பப்ளிகேஷன் ஸோ அந்த கதையே இருக்கு எங்கள் வாத்தியார் தான் அந்த கதையை சொன்னார் பட் லேட்டர் ஆன் ஐ காட் இட் வெரிஃபைட் வென் ஐ ரெட் த்ரூ த ப்ரிஃபேஸ் அந்த மாதிரி லாட் ஆஃப் இன்ஃபர்மேஷன் லைக் திஸ் தட் கேன் பி வெரிஃபைட் ஃப்ரம் ப்ரைமரி சோர்சஸ் அதர் தேன் தி ஸ்டோரிஸ் அண்ட் ஆல் தட் So, I'm just, I think this topic is very important to me. Please, interest me around. So, it's a very, very wonderful thing that they have started on this project. And I wish them all success. And thank you very much for this beautiful presentation. On the, on the just library, to add uh, to what Sanjay said, the website does have that monthly updates nowadays. Yeah. Because Janaki, who used to be with Shruti, she is the one who now works on it every month she selects a topic writes an article with reference to what is in the library puts it up on the website so the website gets updated every month with information but the newsletter is a very good idea which i think we can definitely take up and uh, build there yeah, and members and of the experts committee one, one moment can i yeah. this, 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 you were saying the feedback from the people uh, that's why we have provided that ask the librarian but the problem is nobody responds <laughs> so we have to publicize <laughs> ask the library ask the library <laughs> no no you have to publicize one feedback from somebody giving their name in public ah. then the other person will say oh my name is not there then they will come and give you <laughs> <laughs> members of the experts committee uh, mic please dr rama kausalya bemi park na 80s la na phd pannum bodu early 80s la idhe music academy library ki tanjavur la endu varuven வந்து ஐ திங்க் அவர் பேர் ராமசாமின்னு நினைக்கிறேன் ராமசாமியை நினைக்கிறேன் அவரும் எனக்காக பாடுபடுவோம் நான் ரொம்ப கஷ்டப்படுவோம் ஏதாவது ஒரு ஆர்டிக்கல் ஏதாவது ஒன்று கேட்பேன் அவரும் என்னோட குழந்தை விடுவோம் நானும் தேடுவோம் நாங்கள் இந்த ரெண்டு நாளில் லீவில் வந்திருப்பேன் இந்த தேட்டரில் எனக்கு போயிடும் அந்த ஒரு நாள் இப்போல்லாம் வந்து பேசிட்டு போனால் எவ்வளோ சௌரியம்னு அதை பார்த்துன்னு தெரியறது எனக்கு பேசிட்டு மட்டுமில்லை ஏதாவது ஒன்று தேடுறோம் அது வேணும் தேடும்போது எங்கெல்லாமோ அலைவோ யார்ட்டையும் யார்ட்டையும் ஷேர் பண்ணிக்க மாட்டா வேறு 
இருக்கு எங்கிட்ட ரொம்ப ஆனால் கொடுக்க மாட்டான் அதெல்லாம் திண்டாடி போவோம் அப்பெல்லாம் எவ்வளோ பெரிய விஷயங்கள் உங்களுக்கு ஒரு நமஸ்காரம் இப்போ பேசிட்டு பண்ணுறவான் இல்லை எங்களை போல் எதாவது பழச்சிலாம் தேடிட்டு இருக்க வாழ்க்கை எவ்வளோ சௌரியம் இது தேங்க்ஸ் அ லாட் தேங்க்ஸ் அ லாட் அவ்வளோதான் சொல்ல தோன்றுறது நமஸ்காரம் ரொம்ப முக்கியமான ஒரு இது இந்த இது திஸ் டிஸ்கஷன் எல்லாருக்கும் தெரிய வேண்டியது அவர் சொன்னால் ராமசாமி ஒருத்தர் லைப்ரரி இருந்தார் அவருக்கு முன்னாடி ஸ்ரீகண்டன் ஒருத்தர் இருந்தார் அப்போல்லாம் லைப்ரரி மேலே இருக்கும் மாடியில் இருக்கும் என்ன விசேஷன்னா ஸ்ரீகண்டனுக்கு எல்லா புக்ஸும் அத்துப்படி எனக்கு ரிசர்ச்சுக்கு என்ன பண்ணால் அவர் எனக்கு சஜஸ்ட் பண்ணோம் இந்த புக்கெலாம் எடுத்து படின்னு சங்கீத சர்வாத்த ச அந்த இது அது வந்து மூணு எடிஷன்ஸ் இருக்குது மியூசிக் அகாடமியில் எயிட்டீன் ஃபிஃப்டி நைன் எயிட்டீன் செவன்டி செவன் அண்ட் தென் எயிட்டீன் நைன்டி சிக்ஸ் மூணு தான் எனக்கு எடுத்து கொடுத்து ஏன்னா ஐ வாஸ் டூயிங் ரிசர்ச் ஆன் தியாகராஜ சுவாமி இஸ் ஐ மீன் இந்த ட்ரினிட்டிஸ் இது பாட்டாந்தரம் இதில் இருக்கிற தியாகராஜ கீர்த்தனைகளை லிஸ்ட் பண்ணி கொடுத்து எனக்கு என்னென்ன சேஞ்சஸ் இருக்குது வித் இன் த த்ரீ எடிஷன்ஸ் எல்லாம் எனக்கு எழுதி கொடுத்தார் ஸோ நாலேஜபிள் அண்ட் ஹி நியூ exactly where the books were and what kind of books a particular scholar needed avlo the such a knowledgeable librarian those were all rombo marakave mudiyadhu apra i just want to ask in the journal storage one irukliya jstor 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 adha enna article enna padikano na you have to go through via uh, uh, established library in irukku correct can music academy library be made pannalama we can definitely we can do it it can now now when the ipo when i need any j store material i go through roja muthaya yeah, research exactly. library ah. but we can do it here also it's not a problem you know very important article padikona na padik mudiyadilla exactly because it is behind a wall yes yeah. thank you please do that thank you ah, thank you dr sumathi meenakshi krishnan as um, this morning's session was really an eye opener as um, shri sanjay mentioned unless you are a rebel you can't be creative i think uh, we shri ram did that for us what is this rebel in a way that before that the library was there and you know there is a kind of hesitancy and there is a kind of for idu uh, about digital computer eduva irundhalum there is a fear so as a young person you came in you took I'm the lead and you <laughs> <laughs> i am a kind of bold now <laughs> no but it's really uh, excellent work that has been done that has thank to be you, commended sir. thank you just a couple of uh, other points that i wanted to mention uh, you mentioned series of uh, contributions of family manuscripts books etc even others have contributed a number of books i must on record place dr rita rajan has also given a number of books from her own collection which is very rare very special and rare ide madri dr premalata worked on the journal index it was part of her the, uh, some kind yes, under dr n ramanathan which was the primary source for us initially edavadu journal la venumna we would go search for that so that was also very valuable and uh, subramanian dikshitar's letters to chinnaswami mudaliyar they are also recorded in savitri rajan's book which is also there in our library that's in english yeah. thank you thank you so much sumathi we'll be winding up the session now uh, tomorrow we meet again at 85 for the 14th day the presentations will be vidwan tkv ramanuja charyulu speaking on vidwan nch krishnamacharyulu a centenary The second will be Vidwan Dr. K. Ashok on use of nadais in thala cycles, points and counterpoints. Sangeeta Kalanadi Lalgudi Srimati Vijay Lakshmi will preside over the session. I look forward to seeing you all here tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye for now.